Good evening, hockey fans, and welcome to another edition of Ice Wolves Insider. Well, on tonight's program, we'll be joined by Ice. Well, on tonight's program, we'll be joined by Ice Wolves head coach Bob Beatty, as well as Ice Wolves players Carl Wiemet and Tim Rollins, and then later on in from the stands, we'll be joined by Ice Wolves followers Dustin Forbes, Curtis Kalicki, and Keith Crasher. Should be a great show. We'll see you right back. Welcome back to Ice Wolves Insider. At this stage, we're talking with Ice Wolves head coach and director of hockey operations, uh, Bob Beatty. Bob, welcome to the program. Thanks, Kelly. All right. So we haven't had a show for a couple of weeks. Let's go back a couple of weeks. Uh, one of the games I wanted to talk about was uh, a huge victory on home ice uh, over the Battleford's North Stars. Uh, you guys had lost a few in a row up to that point, uh, including one against the North Stars early in the week. Just talk about uh, how big it was to win uh, that game. Well, it was... Uh big win obviously uh, you know we hadn't had the results we wanted we hadn't been playing uh, you know well enough uh, you know to get points in uh, eight games so it was a it was a good uh, failing to get the monkey off our back and it was a tremendous effort by the guys they uh, had uh, you know one fan tell me that's the best game he saw us play all year I'm not you know, sure that that was, you know, uh, our best effort overall, but it, it was certainly a great effort. And, uh, you know, we were getting back to doing the little things properly, finishing our checks and, you know, playing hard, uh, you know, all four lines, you know, uh, getting pucks in effectively. And, uh, and our, uh, our back check was a lot better. How big was it to uh, actually come through with a victory over the North Stars, a team that, uh, you know, if you guys qualify for the postseason, you will likely face in the first round there? Well, I think it was big. You know, uh, first and foremost, it was, uh, you know, a chance to turn things around. And, uh, you know, secondly, uh, you know, if we're in, uh, we will be facing the North Stars. And, uh, you know, it's something for them to think about. Yeah, it seems that you guys have had, I'm not sure, I think it's you guys are 3-3 three and three against them this year. Uh, maybe talk about the series so far against the North Stars this year. You, you seem to be uh, pretty evenly matched. Well, we, uh, you know, we have one in their building. Uh, you know, we, we've played well in their building, but we've also played poorly. And we've played well against them here, and we've also played poorly. So, you know, I, I think our chances are pretty good if we can bring our A game uh, you know, in a playoff series, I uh, don't see any uh, reason why we can't uh, come out of it. Uh, for those people who haven't maybe seen the North Stars play this year, uh, maybe just give us a thumbnail sketch of, of what that team's about. Well, they don't stop skating. They, their work ethic is, uh, is very good. Uh, you know, they're a well-coached team. You know, they've had some transition, uh, you know, with uh, players in and out of their lineup, but... Uh, you know, they, I, I would say their team identity is they're a skating club and they work extremely hard. They're, they're not, uh, you know, uh, full of uh, snipers, you know, nor are we. But, uh, you know, I think we match up pretty well against them if we can play the way we, uh, you know, we're capable of. All right, so after that 4-3, uh, I believe it was a shootout victory over the North Stars, so you guys uh, headed out on a road trip. Uh, first up was the Nipwin Hawks. Unfortunately, you guys didn't get the result. Uh, you wanted a 5 nothing win by the Hawks uh, in Nipwin. Maybe talk about that game. Well, they scored early. Uh, you know, I thought, uh, you know, we had a for good first shift, and, uh, you know, they happened to score early. And, you know, we had numerous opportunities. I wouldn't say that, uh, you know, we were... Uh, you know, it wasn't a five nothing game. I, I, you know, we weren't gonna uh, gather enough uh, offense to score six goals. So obviously, you know, you we're not gonna win that game. I, but uh, you know, we we did have an, numerous chances. You know, a post and uh, you know some some quality scoring chances that. Uh, uh, you know, Davis Jones made uh, great saves off of, and you know, Pucks would hit a shin pad on the way in, and you know, it just, uh, you know, uh, bounces weren't going our way. But uh, you know, I don't think that uh, you know it was a whitewash by any means. And speaking of uh, goaltenders, uh, you made a couple of switches during that game. If you could 
kind of explain the rationale as to, to what was happening there in that game. Well, Miles, uh, you know, had uh, a medical appointment the day before. We felt that, uh, you know, Dason would, uh, you know, give us a, a good opportunity to win. We started them. They scored early. We needed a change of momentum. We put Miles in, and uh, you know when, uh, you know when the second intermission rolled around, we thought we might as well give Miles a rest for. Uh, uh, for the Malford game, and uh, you know, Dason, you know, stood on his head in the third period. He he was exceptional. Mm. So uh, that brings us to the Malford game. Uh, basically, a must-win game for you guys. Uh, obviously, uh, people know you you came through. Uh, how tough was it though, uh, in terms of getting the guys' confidence level up uh, for that big game? Just one night after after losing five nothing in in point, did you like the the guys' mindset coming into the game in uh, Melford? Well, uh, you know. It, when it's down to uh, what it's down to here, uh, you know, there's, I mean, there's no tomorrow. We, uh, you know, absolutely needed a win in the Malford game. It would have been nice to get it in regulation, but, uh, you know, we'll take it. We, uh, we got two points, uh, you know, uh, uh, we just have to, you know, control our own destiny here. We, we're going to maybe need a little help, but, uh, you know, we've got two huge games coming up with Flynn Flon, and uh, we have to approach those with confidence as well. Yeah. So what do you think did it for you in that, in that game in Melfort in terms of uh, coming away with the victory? Well, uh, to be honest, I thought, uh, you know, Miles was the difference. They, they had a, a number of quality scoring chances, uh, you know, a couple of breakaways, and uh, Miles was outstanding. And, uh, you know, we chipped away. It was, uh, you know, obviously a tight game to an overtime win, but... Uh, uh, you know, we didn't take a lot of shifts off, and uh, it's the way we have to play against anybody. It's uh, playoff hockey. Yeah. So as things stand now, uh, as we speak, uh, the Mustangs have three games remaining. You have two, as you mentioned, against uh, Flint Flon Bombers. Uh, the Mustangs uh, don't have an easy schedule. They lost a couple on the weekend. They actually had three games ahead of you, now just the one. After seeing what's happened over the weekend, um, how do you handicap your, your odds uh, making to the postseason uh, as you look ahead of the week ahead? Well, I'm not going to handicap anything. We just have to go out and uh, get a win on Thursday night and start from there. You know, we can uh, control what we can control, and, uh, you know, that's in our hands right now. We'll see what uh, what Melford does, but uh, we, we have no control over that. So, you know, we just have to stick to the task at hand and uh, focus on, on Flint Flon. Now, Flint Flon... Uh, you know, obviously is, is up there in the standings, but uh, you guys have done very well against them on home ice uh, this season. Uh, you guys must be feeling, uh, you know, pretty confident heading into this uh, home and home against the Bombers, I'm assuming. Well, we're not taking anything for granted, but, you know, we have played well against Flynn Flon, especially in our building, and, uh, you know, there's no uh, reason not to uh, repeat that. Uh, you know, if we're as focused as, uh, as we can get. Uh, there's really no reason why we, we can't win a game on Thursday night. All right. Well, Bob, that's all I had to ask you uh, tonight. Uh, thanks very much for joining us today. Thanks, Kelly. All right. Just joining us, this is Ice Wolves Insider. We've been joined by Ice Wolves head coach uh, Bob Beatty. We'll be uh, right back with Ice Wolves players uh, Tim Rollins and Carl Wimet. Back to Ice Wolves Insider. At this stage, we're joined by Ice Wolves players Tim Rollins and uh, Carl Wiemetz. Uh, guys, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks. All right. So you guys find yourself in uh, quite the race for the playoffs here with the Melford Mustangs. It's uh, neck and neck as we speak. And as it turned out, uh, turns out, uh, your most recent game was a huge victory over the Melford Mustangs in Melford. Uh, maybe just talk about uh, the keys to success. Why you thought, uh, in hindsight, that you guys uh, prevailed there in Melford? Start with you, there, Tim. Okay. Yeah. It was uh, it was a good effort from the guys. We uh, had a big night for Miles, who definitely kept us in the game and gave us a chance to win. Um, their goalie had made some good saves too. We, it was kind of a bit more run and gun than we would have liked the game, trading exchanges and that kind of stuff. But it was nice to come out on top, and it just kind of brought the spirits back up in the guys because we did have a bit of a losing streak there. 
so it's nice heading into the last couple of games here to have that kind of mindset. Yeah. Carl, how did you uh, see the game? What, 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 for you, were the keys to success there? Well, I thought it was a good game. I mean, it was back and forth, back and forth. There was a couple of turnovers for both teams, but, I mean, obviously we came up on top. Um, and, yeah, I just I think we did the small things right, and uh, that's actually why we won. We, you know, we kept battling until the end. It was, I think it was 2-2, and uh, we scored in the overtime, so it was a good game. Yeah. So, so what's it been like uh, being in this race with the uh, Melford Mustangs? Uh, because it seems like forever, just the way the schedule makers had it, that there's been games in hand that they've had on you. And so no one's really known, okay, where exactly you know, are these two teams in terms of this race? As it turns out, it's, it's since uh, narrowed. Uh, they just have one game on you now. And you guys are, unfortunately, I imagine, doing a lot of uh, out-of-town scoreboard watching sort of thing. Uh, maybe just talk about what it's been like uh, in this race. So I'll start with you there, Tim. Yeah, it's been uh, tough. I guess there's two ways to look at it. We had a lot more games before Christmas and stuff, and now we should have a break where we should be doing maybe a little bit more and better more with the games and stuff. And they kind of have games in hand on us, but you watch the scores, you kind of hope for the best, but you know ultimately that your destiny is the games you win and you control your own destiny. So we just got to go hard and same into every game and want to win it, and if we can do that, then we should be fine. Mm. Uh, Carl, your thoughts on uh, being in this uh, playoff chase here? Well, it's been nerve-wracking nerve a little bit, um, watching them, you know, being tied with us and uh, having a game in hand. Um, but, I mean, like, we got to go in every game, you know, wanting to win. So these last two games that are coming up, uh, that's what we control and that's what we need to win in order to get on top on Melford. Yeah. Now, as it turns out, uh, both you guys are, are veteran players, uh, both 20-year-olds, I believe, and uh, you joined the team uh, uh, later in the season. Uh, maybe just talk about what it's been like, uh, your time in LaRange so far, and what it's like to join this team uh, mid-season, kind of in your final year, final year of junior eligibility. I'll start with you there, Tim. Yeah, it's always, it's always hard getting to a new team. You don't know what to expect or what, but I talked to Bob a lot, and he was always very sincere and very honest and very straightforward, which I really enjoyed. And the coaching staff's been good. The guys have been good. And, uh, no, I've really enjoyed my time here in Laranche. It's been really good. Yeah. Now, you've seen uh, quite a bit of uh, time on the top line, top two lines there. Uh, maybe talk about uh, playing with some of these guys at the, the top end of the, the forward there. Yeah, it's been fun. Just finding new chemistry and combinations with the guys. And uh, like some, you'll have more success than with others. But as long as you all kind of do little things right and you all work together and try to reach that same goal, we'll be fine. Carl, maybe talk about uh, how you found out that you were now going to be a uh, LaRange uh, Ice Wolf and what it's been like uh, since then. Well, you know, I was playing in the auto league and um, I wanted to play on a team that was going to be in playoffs. And at the time, uh, the Ice Wolves were in the playoff spot. And I mean, I think we're, we're still, we still are in the playoff spot. Um, but I mean, the first game I got here, I felt like I fit in pretty well. I mean, the guys seem like a good family. Everybody's a family. Uh, re really impressed with how Bob, you know, handled things. And... Um, it's just, it's been really great since I've been here. Yeah. And I noticed the team has used you uh, quite a bit uh, on the point and the, the power play. Uh, imagine you're, you're enjoying that, uh, seeing uh, yeah, extra time Yeah, I mean, that's what I've always loved to be playing. I mean, uh, power play has been probably the things I've loved to play on. I mean, um, I think I do pretty well on it. And, um, you know, I like helping the team with it. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tim, uh, final question for you here. Uh, you are a former Battleford's North Star, and as you likely are aware, there is a history between the North Stars and the Ice Wolves uh, franchises and their communities, really. Uh, maybe just talk about uh, the fact that, uh, you know, being a former North Star, now you get a chance to play with LaRange. Uh, what was the reaction in North Battleford when people heard that you're, you're now with LaRange? I'm sure you got friends still uh, back there. Just talk about that. Yeah, definitely. It was, I remember my first couple of years of junior when I was in Battleford, and there was always kind of like who you guys, who they hated most and who this was. And we'd have to come to the, the Mel and play here. And as a, a different team, opposing team, you hate that. But now you're now I'm here and it's I wouldn't want to play anywhere else. It's the biggest advantage. It's things that we should be using. And it's uh, the opportunity to play them could be pretty fun. I would definitely like the opportunity and just kind of get some payback and yeah. be good. You still have a lot of uh, friends on the team, I assume? Yeah, I know quite a few of the guys. So it was actually nice to see some of them when we played them a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And how would you uh, assess the two teams in terms of how they stack up? Yeah, Battleford's a good, hardworking team. Both, uh, both teams have good coaches. And uh, I don't think, to be honest, that either of our teams are overly one of the more overskilled teams. But as long, I think it's going to be a harder team 
the harder working team that comes out on top. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do everything in our power we can to get the guys ready and make sure that's us. Yeah, nicely said. Well, uh, Carl and Tim, uh, thanks very much for being on the program. Okay, thank yeah. you very much. All right. If you're just joining us, uh, this has been another edition of Ice Wolves Insider, and we've been uh, chatting with uh, Ice Wolves players Tim Rollins and Carl we met. We'll be uh, right back with From the Stands. Welcome back to Ice Wolves Insider. Well, it's now time for our usual From the Stand segment. And this evening, we're joined by Ice Wolves followers Dustin Forbes, Keith Kranschmer, and uh, Curtis Kalecki. Uh, guys, welcome to the program. Hi, Hi Kelly. Kelly. All right, so lots to talk about this week. Obviously, uh, the Ice Wolves are still involved in this neck-and-neck -neck, uh, playoff race with the Melford Mustangs. Uh, as we speak, they're tied. They have two games left against the Flint Flon Bombers. Melford has got three games left against some tough opponents as well. Um, how do you guys uh, handicap uh, this uh, going down the stretch here? You like the Ice Wolves' chances? I'll start with Curtis there. Well, we're two and two against Flin Flon, and we played them pretty tough in our barn here. So, if Thursday's any uh, indication if we can come out and get at least one point, because we need one point as it stands right now, uh, we could be in pretty good shape because, you know, uh, Melfort's got uh, Nip, Win Yorkton, and Flin Flon, and Flintflon and Nippon away in Yorkton in their barn, but uh, Yorkton's a pretty tough team. So, mm. Keith, your thoughts? Well, before this weekend, I, I thought the chances were pretty slim, but uh, Melford losing both those games, I think that certainly increases our odds. I think we control our own destiny now, and I think we have a much better chance, and I, I think we'll do it. I, uh, like Curtis said about uh, the away games in Flintflon and Nippon, those are going to be tough, and Yorkton in Melford, that's going to be tough too. So I, I think we're looking good. Mm. Dustin, your thoughts? Yeah, well, uh, Curtis said it, 2-2 uh, two and two against Flin Flon this year. Uh, both wins have come at home, and uh, actually, a stat for you guys, Flin Flon hasn't won in La Ronge since January 18th, 2011. Wow. So it's been over two years. They've lost 13 straight games at the Mel Hegland Uniplex, huh. uh, playoffs included, of course, the last two years. Yeah. And uh, so it's not a fun place for them to play, and obviously the Ice Wolves work it to their advantage. And uh, like uh, Curtis said, they need a point. A as it stands, both Melford and LaRange have 41 points, and Melford has a tiebreaker. So the Ice will still have some work to do. And I mean, the confines of the Whitney Forum are, are tough to play. So if they're going to try it, if they want to get some points out of the final two games, it, it would likely have to be at home on Thursday night. Mm -hmm. You guys a little nervous at all about Flin Flon being the kingmakers here? Like they play both Melford and LaRange. Of course, uh, Flin Flon has more of a history, playoff history with the Ice Wolves. Um, the game against Melfort is the very last game uh, of all the games that we're talking about here. So who knows if the Flin Flon Bombers will have anything to play for at that stage. Does that at all make you nervous about this uh, race? I'll start with you there, Dustin. Yeah, I don't know if it uh, makes me nervous. Uh, obviously, it's out of my hands. I don't have anything to do with the on-ice performance. But uh, as a follower, you know, you hope that they make the playoffs. And uh, recently, the last uh, couple of weeks, Devin Buffalo, uh, the goaltender for the Flint Fallen Bombers, is starting to find his game a little bit. Uh, he's got a 9.35 save percentage in his last three game, four games. He's uh, got a 2.20 goals against average. So he's rounding into form right at the right time. Uh, now, historically, he also doesn't like to play at the Mel Hagman Uniplex. So <laughs> I guess you got another stat for us. <laughs> yeah, 4.85 goals against average wow. in eight games in uh, LaRange with an 890 save percentage. Oof. So he doesn't like to play here as much as the whole team doesn't. Uh, but uh, uh, it, it's the rivalry, and, and, and they need to get it done or else their season's done. Mm. Keith? Well, one of the concerns not only with Flin Flon but with Yorkton and Nippon is... is if they clinch their spots, what kind of players are they going to set? So what kind of team are they going to put out there that would enable Melford to get the win? So mm -hmm. that, that would be one main concern for me. With uh, Flynn Flon, uh, I don't know. I, I, think, uh, I, th I think we should be able to, beat, to win both those games, but they, they could still definitely be the, uh, be the spoiler considering that they played Melford in their last game. Mm -hmm. so, Curtis? Well, you would you would hope the integrity of hockey comes out, and and <laughs> oh, and, and, the, like and, and these teams and these teams play to win. You know, May if the you're, best man win. And let's, you know, let's if you're gonna bench, I mean, <laughs> if if Reagan's gonna bench all of his boys in the last game and bring up a whole bunch of APs, 
so mm -hmm. that Melford wins, I think Bill Chow would have something to say about it. I don't think Reagan's that type of guy. You know, people dislike him for whatever reason, but, you know, they'll come out and they'll play and they're going to try hard, especially their last regular season game in the Whitney Forum because the, the Bombers fans are, <laughs> they're vicious. You you throw a game like that and they'll be all over you like white on rice. So. Yeah, and Dusty, you're going to get in there. Yeah, obviously I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent yeah. uh, for the Flin Flon side, but you have to think that Mike Reagan's job could quite possibly be on the line. Mm -hmm. And they've lost out to the Ice Holes the last three years. So, sure, we hope the integrity of the game takes over, but in the back of his head, wouldn't he be going, well, if we can face someone else? <laughs> wouldn't that be a good thing? So, I mean, obviously you hear about it uh, in soccer, in hockey, in, at all levels, uh, about potential throwing of the game. Now, I'm not you know, saying that they're going to do that, but you never know. Yeah. I think LaRange and Flin Flon, if they were to face each other, it would have to be in the Bauer Conference Final. Is yes. that right? Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's you know... Lots has to happen, right? Yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting. I'm assuming the Bombers are going to do what's best for their club. Even yeah. that last game, you know, they they could probably just say, you know, we're resting a ton of guys because we we got the blast coming up here. So very hard to say what will happen. Yeah, and that last game comes on the 26th. So that game that Melfort plays in Flin Flon will be after, of course, the Ice Wolves are done their season. So their season could hang in the balance of. Uh, another couple of days after they're done playing. So. But in all fairness, too, uh, Gavin's. Gavin's job could be in the balance as well in Melford's true. Too, because, yeah. I mean, you know, this is his second year, but you got to give Gavin some credit. He's improved by almost 10 points this season, and he's in a playoff battle. And he got rid of a couple of guys and, you know, has got some stuff for next year. Mm. All right, so if the Ice Wolves are successful and able to clinch that final playoff spot, they will likely face the Battlefield North Stars uh, in the first round of the Survivor Series best of five. How do you guys handicap that series, uh, given what we've seen between the North Stars and Ice Wolves uh, this year? I'll start with you there, Curtis. Well, I think most of the fans that watch the Ice Wolves games are, they know that we give up a ton of shots. Battleford gives up the least amount of shots in the league. Less than 30 shots a game, we give up 40 shots a game. Yeah, that's going to be an issue, but I think if we end up playing them and we play them, our big advantage is the power play in LaRange. We're 27%. Hmm. We're far and above the best home team on the on the power play but uh you know like we were talking you were talking to the guys earlier the uh, you know um and we have a rivalry mm -hmm. i mean probably besides flint flon that's the most hated team in in larange's battleford so we played them well we're, we're 500 against them and uh you know i i would like our chances going into that series as as well as uh, as any team yeah keith uh well just going on the last game that we played i I, I think we outshot them, and I, I thought we outplayed them too. And, and uh, um, the um, the the goaltending was great. We, um, you know, Miles made some great saves, and we, we played very well in our end. So I, I think we can handle Battleford. I, th I think you can play with them, and I think we can outplay them. So uh, especially that it's a new season, I, I think our chances would be very good against Battleford. Hmm. Dustin, your thoughts? Yeah, well, like Curtis said, they're 3-3 three and three against Battlefords this year, and Bob stated earlier in the program that one of those wins came in North Battleford, which is a tough place to play. Mm -hmm. And for a team that doesn't win a lot on the road this season in the Ice Wolves, uh, to know you have that feather in your pocket and history that you have been able to, to steal a game out of that building, I think that could go a long way because, as we know, the Ice Wolves won't have home ice in that series. So knowing that you can... You know, afford to lose a game at home if you can pick up one in a in an area that you've been able to win goes a long way as well. Yeah, and, and judging from your call of the uh, the last road game, the loss, the five two loss to North Battleford recently, that sounded like a heck of a game. And of course, uh, they played that game here in Larange. That was a heck of a game. It gave it like a great series, I'm assuming. Yeah, uh, all three games that uh, we've been in uh, the Civic Center this year have been uh, very hostile. Of course, uh, it, it is a hostile environment, uh, much like here. Um, and it uh, has been good hockey. I'll, I don't think there's been a bad game this year uh, between the two. I, I mean, you could discount the 8-2 loss in North Battleford, but uh, it was even still a pretty good game. Uh, but you hope that uh, the Ice Wolves, ultimately, they have to get into that spot first, yeah. right? And then they can start looking towards that. But if they do uh, get it and they do play Battlefords, they have a chance. Do you think they have the goaltending edge? Uh, Miles Hogdowell versus uh, Connor Creech? Uh, start with you, Curtis. You know what, Miles has been a rock. I mean, his save percentage has been exceptionally well. It's been in the, it, you know, even those goals against has been, uh, you know, above three. Uh, he's had one of the better save percentages throughout the season. 
Um, it, it comes down to what the defense does. I mean, we've seen some of these games where we're giving up two on one, three on twos, four on ones, two on ones. You know, your defense is going to have to really just, you know, you're going to have to play a patient game. And when Bob gets into a playoff mode, you're not going to be out coached. And the players listen to him, and the players like him. And you know, there's still some guys around here that know how to play in the playoffs. And uh, you know, I think that you would see a completely 180 shift, and you'd see a defense first mentality. Mm. You guys, uh, I, I think that last game that uh, the Battlefords were here, I, I thought uh, I thought Miles outplayed their goaltender. And uh, he didn't give up, he gave up very few rebounds. The ones that he did, uh, two of them that he did went in, but that was a bit of, of uh, lackadaisical clearing. But I thought he did very well. He looked very good, and I thought he outperformed their goaltending. So I, I don't think there'd be any problem with our goaltending. Hmm. Do you agree either, Dustin? Yeah, I think uh, the goaltending edge would go to Laurent. Obviously, Miles has uh, played strong all year long. Um, he's been battling some things, but he continues to play lights out. And Connor Creech, uh, the Battleford's goaltender, is under 500 against LaRange this year. Uh, one of the victories, uh, Casey Parker, the backup goaltender, mm. uh, played against uh, the Ice Wolves. So Creech is under 500. And uh, I, I like the style of game the Ice Wolves play right now, uh, playoff-wise. You look at the game in Melfort, and uh, it was a little bit, like Tim said, uh, more run and gun than they would have liked. But... They were able to limit the chances at key times, and they play that, you know, maybe it's not the most fun brand of hockey to, to watch play, but it, it, in playoffs, that can get you far. Mm. Uh, so I, I like the edge. And, right. and with that Melford game, I thought it was great, too, that they did score in the overtime, so that proves that they, that shows that they can step it up if they have to, and they can win the big games. Yeah. Well, and they haven't lost a game in overtime. They're 3-0 in overtime. Sure, they've lost some shootouts, but they haven't lost a game in overtime. So, you know, that. And Sebastian Beauregard's been on every overtime winner. Scored oh, twice. Yep. On I, was gonna, I was going to say he scored twice. It's too good to me. It's too good to me. The stats. It's just been unbelievable, this show. All right. Well, thanks, guys, for being on the program. Not Appreciate a problem. That. All right. Just joining us, this is Ice Wolves Insider. This has been our usual From the Stand segment with uh, Dustin Forbes, Keith Kranschmer, and Curtis Kalicki. We'll be uh, right back to wrap things up. Well, that's all the time we have for this evening's edition of Ice Wolves Insider. I want to thank all our special guests this evening. And I also want to remind you, the fans, that the Ice Wolves have one more regular season home game left. That's this coming Thursday, February 21st, 7.30 p.m. at the Mel Hegland Uniplex. And that's a huge game versus the Flin Flon Bombers. Obviously, lost the line for the Wolves in terms of playoff implications. Hope to see you there. <laughs>